Hello, welcome to Hope Ready. I'm your host, Dr. Ellen. The pandemic rages on, and after living through it on campus last semester, we've learned a couple things. Joining me today is Nicole Dentman. She's our COVID operations coordinator. Welcome, Nicole. Thanks for having me, Dr. Allen. Yes. I just thought that I could ask you a couple questions to get us on the right track as we proceed with the semester. So first question, what should students expect in regards to surveillance testing this semester? Yeah, great question. We, new semester, new changes. Um, we are still, I want to clarify at the start, we're still doing symptomatic testing. Of course, that is not going away. So if students are ever experiencing symptoms, even the most minor ones, uh, we recommend that they complete their patient portal. Uh, there's links to it right on in.hope.edu, right at the top banner, there's a link. So all students need to do is click the link and complete their patient portal. And then a nurse will reach out to them the nurse is already gonna be able to look at their symptoms too when they make that call um, to schedule an appointment. So we're still doing symptomatic testing, but surveillance, this is where the change comes in. Last semester, we were doing the daily 1% of the entire campus. And this semester, we're still doing that for students who live outside of wastewater zones. Um, so off-campus students, commuter students, uh, some students who live in cottages and apartments, uh, maybe a little bit further from campus sure. who are outside of wastewater zones, they'll still be getting the 1% random daily surveillance request to test. However, because of the good work of Dr. Kopek and Dr. Best, we get to move toward the surveillance side of wastewater. So we get to look at the wastewater data that gets collected every day, and that will inform who we, who we test. Uh, the good news about this, it's all data driven. Uh, so it's not like people are picking on certain residence halls or cottages to test more than others. It's that if we see an increasing signal, we're gonna test that community. Uh, some implications for that could mean that students are getting tested more frequently this semester. For example, if you live in Dykstra, Collin, or Cook, those are really large residential halls that have a lot of students. And so the potential for an up an increase in signal could be higher there. So students may be testing more frequently, um, but we, it's data driven and we're really excited about that. And the testing team's done a great job at laying a great foundation that we can work from this semester. That's so exciting. We're using what we learned last semester and applying it this semester, exciting. Okay, next question. What changes are there with that health screening form that students were told last semester, you have to fill this out every single day? Yeah, we got feedback from students uh, that, you know, that's, that's a lot to do, a lot to remember, a lot to think about. Um, it, even though it's just a form, we wanna respect students' time. So staff and faculty are still going to be requested to complete daily screening forms. But students, we're excited for this semester because we're just asking students to submit forms on one of three occasions. The first, again, if there is symptomatic. So if you're experiencing any symptoms, we recommend that you get tested. The second type that you, second thing you should report is if you've been exposed to COVID. So we do our, I know, right? Like we do our own contact tracing. If a student tests positive on campus, then Hope, Hope has a contact tracing team that will identify those close contacts and those students will be contacted. But a student may be exposed to a non-HOPE student, maybe a family member, maybe at their employment outside of HOPE. And so for those students, you can self-report your exposure and someone from the college will get back to you, uh, talk you through what the quarantine process looks like, what the releasing looks like, uh, what the testing looks like. So if you've been exposed, report it. The third type of form is uh, for students who test outside of HOPE. So we, we know that sometimes students go to the local Walgreens and test, or they may go home for the weekend and uh, choose to test at home. And that's okay. That's, that's absolutely okay for students to test outside of HOPE. But we would like to know it so that we can initiate our contact tracing and we can support you as this positive student throughout the process. So, um, so those are the three types of reporting that you need to do. Um, and all of that can be found in that top link of in.hope.edu at the very top banner. Yes. Um, also, you could Google it too. <laughs> yes. Awesome. This has all been super helpful. The changes, the response on the part of the college, I think 
what it means for students is you got to check your email, right? Respond to notifications. And then you also have to be responsible to yourself and the, the greater good really and report if you have been exposed, report if you're feeling symptoms and get the help you need so that we can all remain hope ready. Thanks so much.